It's actually been about six or seven weeks since uh, the video we made, me and my son struggling to put this onto the worktop and it's taken me till now to actually start to have a look at it. Life gets in the way, other projects, work, you name it, but I'm onto it now and really I'd like to see about getting this engine running and back in the bike sometime before the summer ends this year. So what do I know about it? Looking at it it's obviously had a bit of a refresh at some point in the past. Uh, probably when the guy I bought it off, uh, when he got it, I think it had been refreshed before he got it. It looks like it's got a new head gasket and if I look at the base gasket and where the rocker covers are, they actually look like they're well sealed. However, when I've got the engine running, which was Definitely the first time in five years, according to the previous owner, who said he'd never managed to get it running. It leaked oil from the front. It didn't run particularly well, but I'll be honest, I hadn't set up the carbs or anything. I gave them only a very rudimentary look. And it was blowing a bit at the front. Now, when I've come to strip it down, I've realised that the headers weren't really as well seated as they might have been. So I think that's probably part of that problem. Um, so I think the biggest issue I've got is the oil leak, which was quite severe. If you look in our past videos, you'd be able to see it dripping down. Um, now, 70s Triumphs were renowned for leaking oil. Well, what people didn't realise was Hondas were just about as bad. And the CB750 was, you know, notorious, or is notorious, for having oil leaks here and there. It's a fairly simple engine. But some of the ways that they've sealed things have been, you know, a bit perhaps more complicated than they needed to be. Um, and there's a few things that can happen, especially when an engine's been rebuilt, that can cause it to leak from around the head area. I'm going to work my way through from the top. First of all, trying to find something's wrong that would cause the oil leak. Now, there are a number of uh, suspects. One is the actual brand new head gasket. Sometimes they're either thicker or thinner, or if the head and the block have been resurfaced, that the little seals, the O-rings that are in here and there, are either not thick enough or too thick and squidge out of the way. The other thing is there are a number of positioning, uh, like what the, I can't I can't think of the name at the moment. I'll put it in the I'll put it in the text at the side that position the head and keep it secure. That sometimes can be that little bit too long if the gasket's too thin. So those are some things that I'm going to look at. There's also the infamous pucks. These are circular seals that sit underneath the cam carriers that are notorious for perhaps having a leak. Now my money's on that at the moment but hey, we'll see what we find. I'm going to strip it down, go working from the top downwards, put the bits to one side, inspect them and look for the smoking gun. Let's see how far we have to go with this. Now I'm guessing that it's going to be reasonably stuck on because it hasn't fell loose so far. So I'll just give it a bit of a tap and then we'll see if it comes off. Well, like I said, that's a lovely new gasket that's in there. So with the rocker cover off, it is very clean in here and I did actually expect that because I do think that this engine has been given a top end refresh. Um, I do think that the oil leak is probably uh, just some oversight rather than uh, some real big, you know, big problem with it. 
So the next thing for me to do is to actually remove the rockers. What you do need to do though is relieve the tension so that they're not on the cam. Uh, and then you slip out a um, shaft that holds them in place. So to, to do that, you know, undo the adjusters, undo these couple of bolts. This should just slide out to the side, they should pick up. It's important that you put them back where you found them. So I'm going to lay them out. I'm not intending to have this engine apart for a long time. So I'm going to lay them out where they come from on the workbench there. Uh, so that when I put it back together, I should be able to just put them back where they came from. Before I start touching anything at the top end, it does tell me to take out the cam chain tensioner, which is basically just held in by three either bolts or, in this case, Allen screws at the back end here. Now taking it out is not such a big deal, but obviously when you put it back, you need to make sure everything's positioned correctly. There we go. The workshop manual, or the Honda one that I've got, actually covers all this in about five or six steps. And the next bit is to remove the, or to undo the bolts for the cam chain sprocket. So it's a 10 mil, better if you use the right end. And you don't want to drop these inside unless you want to go fishing in the bottom end. Top drop. Get your over so that the other one's pointing up. Another one safely removed. Some of the uh, rocker arms will be a bit slack because they're not on the actual lobe of a cam and some won't be. So what you want to do is slacken them all off so that they're all not actually tight onto the cam. It's a 10 mil lock nut. So. If any do remain tight, all you need to do is turn the engine over a little bit when you actually come to be removing that one. As it is, I think I've only got one I need to think about. Taking the rocker shafts out, just slacken off these. And then remove these, those were a 10, these are an 8. Again, not anything you want to drop down inside. We do have washers. Make sure your washers are all accounted for.
interesting uh, use of the wrong fastener. Next thing to do is to remove the four camshaft retainers. These are also the sort of top bearings. It's a 10 mil and it's a little bit tight on this side, so you need to make sure you've got a thin wall socket. And it's a nut on one side and a machine screw on the other. I do like the way that Honda seem to enjoy using different fasteners for everything. Again, being careful for any washers, nuts or anything like that, you don't want them dropping down. I'll keep them in the same order. Fingers have got oil on them now, so that makes it not quite as grippy as they were. I'll put a hook around the chain now, because this is the next thing that's going to come off, is this cam shaft as it comes out this will come loose and I'm just going to put a little hook around there and bend it down so it hooks under at the back here you can hook them back out again it's not such a big deal so next thing is camshaft should be coming out Take your time, a bit of wiggling and it will come through. You don't want to scratch anything or make any problems for yourself. I can't say they look the world's best, but they look good enough to be honest for uh, when I rebuild it. Yeah. And looking at the camshaft. Again, there's no real grooves. I mean, those marks are, are literally just marks. I suspect they'd polish out. Looking all the way around on it, it does appear to be in quite good condition. So that'll be going back in. It's under here where there are some pucks and 
I really think that that's likely to be where the leak's going to be from. So I need to take these out now, which will be reasonably solidly stuck on, and have a look underneath. Take a bit of wiggling. Well, there's the infamous pucks. And to be honest, it's going to be the one over here, I think, that's going to be the issue. They actually, well, they're not, they don't look like they've been breached, but they're, uh, also there's a oil feed jet here. I think there'll be another one at the other side of this and there's a o-ring on there that looks okay a couple of dowels to position it looking good it's got a bit of oil in it as well so it's just a, a bit of persuasion nothing nothing dramatic just to start it moving There's the other oil jet and no ring on it. The edges. Oh, these are actually blanks, but they still have a cover on them. Uh, well, no smoking gun that I can see, but that's always the way, isn't it? I was hoping that I was going to find one of these that didn't look like it was sealing properly. And there is nothing obvious. Um, so. It's, uh, you know, it's not possible to say. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the head off. And to do that, it's held on by an inordinate amount of uh, bolts and studs and things. So I'm gonna have to make sure I release it very steadily using the pattern that you would tighten it by. So I'll do the reverse of the pattern of tighten it by to release it. It's uh, quite a big lump of metal and uh, they are prone to you know trying to find some way to warp themselves or just slightly be misshapen so i'll go and find that i'll uh, get the appropriate spanners and then we'll gently release the cylinder head there are 16 nuts that hold the head on plus there are another five that are under these pucks now, I know I'm going to damage these getting them out, but I'm intending to use new ones anyway. He says damage them, first get them out. There we go. They were sealed in quite well, actually. Someone's had a go. Perhaps too much of a go. see this is the one that I had money on leaking and to be honest there's nothing obvious about that because the oil was dripping down at the front here and literally you can put your finger through there so oh dear so my next hope are uh, some o-rings that are around either these two I think or two at the back I'm not sure which right let's get my diagram out and I'll start getting all these nuts and uh, nuts undone on the cylinder head there are five four in the bottom of these holes and this one uh, bolts as well as 16 nuts now having looked in a workshop manual it sort of implies to undo these first. Before I start putting things back though, I'll make sure I get a proper order. It doesn't really show a tightening sequence for these ones. 
uh, but it does show a tightening sequence for those. So I'm going to loosen these off, take them out, or at least have them so that they're on the way out. Then I'm going to follow the actual tightening sequence in reverse to do the rest. I think I've already said that, but just to be careful. And while trying to find an appropriate socket, it would appear that these have got Allen headed screws in as well, which again seems a bit odd. And there's a good chance I might actually put the Allen head screws back because uh, you know they might be totally adequate. But I will have to look into that and have to make sure that I can torque them up. So let's have a go at uh, loosening these babies off. Not a problem with that one. Well, you see, I don't know what they should be talked up to. I haven't looked that up. These are, you yeah, know, not taking much to undo. I don't suspect they need much, but uh, it would be nice. Oops, yeah, there's not one in that one. That's just a freebie. Stainless. What am I trying? Now I'm going to undo them using this numbered pattern, starting with number one, which is that one. Just slightly off. Then number two, which is this one. Just about a quarter of a turn. And number three, which is this one. Can't say this feel monstrously tight. Number four is that one. I think I've undone everything that I can so far. There's another bolt here I just spotted. So before I start moving it, it doesn't seem to be doing anything but perhaps holding the head on. So I'll just whip that out as well. Bit of cowardice set in and I did put uh, something to block the cam chain tunnel up. So that if I dropped anything, it wouldn't go through. So now I think the only thing that's holding this on here is habit. So let's see if it will uh, come off. Well, it's not very stuck. There we go. There goes my uh, cam chain. I don't think that's going to go very far with that. Note to self, use lighter grade wire in future. There we go. And you get to see this before me. And I don't want to be dropping any bits and pieces down inside the engine, so I'm going to move it now. And look at that. Pretty much clean as a whistle, huh? Hmm. 
So as I said, someone's been in here recently and they've they've left writing. Right, to be investigated further. So somebody has been in here very, very recently. And it all looks really nice and clean. Now the next area where I thought oil might be leaking from is you can definitely see the O-rings that are on the back side there. I don't know if there are any at the front. I thought they might be at the front as well. And if you've had the head skimmed or you've got a different spec of head gasket, these O-rings can be you know, an issue. So that's the next thing for me to look at. But as things stand, I'm not too unhappy. I need to go and have a look at the underside of the head now. Time for me to catch up with you and have a look at the combustion chambers. Now I've still got those screws in here, so they'll be falling out shortly. Well, that doesn't look bad at all, does it? Seems almost a shame I've had to take this engine apart. Now, is there a dowel there? Is that still on the block? Looks like there should be a dowel. Nothing obvious here. Oops, look at that. Hmm, mucky buggers, they didn't clean that bit up. I can feel that with my finger. That's it all apart. Only smoking gun, is it a smoking gun? Some of the fastenings are a little bit dubious, shall we say, uh, but maybe fine, I'll have to look into that. I'm not 100% convinced everything was tightened up as uh, perhaps it should have been. So I'm gonna stop at this point and give it a good dose of thinking about. I'm gonna clean everything, because some bits looked clean on the surface, but once I've got inside, not necessarily inside the engine, but parts of the cylinder head that look a little bit ropey. And then having a thunk, I'll probably put out another video with some of the things that I've perhaps come across. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please do subscribe. Mm -hmm.